Have you ever been stuck behind a car at a stoplight when the light turns green, the driver is not paying any attention, and just sits there? Doesn't that just make you angry? Well, it's happened to me. And that's what we're going to talk about, diffusing our anger. Oh, no. <laughs> Stay tuned. And welcome to this week's episode of Living Hope Today. And I'm your host, Tori Anton, and it's so good to have you with us this week. Well, as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to talk about something everyone has experienced, and that's anger. I know I have. <laughs> if you're honest, you probably have been too. So I hope you'll plan to stay with us for the rest of this broadcast as we get into some of the most common occurrences that we all face. But before we do, I want to remind you to be sure to hit the like, share, and the comment below this player here. You can see all the buttons down there, uh, whether you're watching on Facebook or whether you're watching on YouTube. We would love to hear from you. Uh, I also encourage you to friend us. Uh, you can go to the top of Facebook on the page, that, your page there. If you see, uh, uh, don't see the word friend, that means you aren't our friend yet. So hit that button that will friend, friend you to uh, AIC's Facebook page. Or if you're on YouTube, you can hit the subscribe button at the top, the red, uh, on our YouTube channel. When you do that on YouTube, be sure to hit that little bell for notification when we're airing a new broadcast. Also, if you want to contact us directly, here are some great ways uh, to reach us. Here's our Connect uh, With Us page with our email and our, A, uh, our AIC mailing address. Now, we've received many questions and prayer requests from many of you by using this Connect With Us addresses here that you see. So I hope you will avail yourself to write and let us uh, join you in prayer for your prayer needs. And uh, we would be honored to do that. Uh, this week, I want to address a very common action that I have done, and that probably many of you have probably experienced as well, and that's to get angry. Uh, maybe to be mad or upset at something or someone. You know, it's, uh, it's common uh, uh, because almost everyone has been in that situation where anger takes over from something you didn't like and there is danger in keeping an attitude of anger. And on this week's study, we're going to look at anger. Is it a sin? And what happens when we don't let anger go? I want you to stay tuned. That's what we're going to look into today. So I hope you'll stay with us. But before we do, let's get started with some great gospel music by uh, some great friends of mine. Uh, the Cree First Nations singers, the Sunrise Band. I want you to listen to this. They sing a neat song. It says, Hey, I'm a believer. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah. 
trust in Jesus Christ Well, this is what you say Some great singing by the Sunrise Band representing the Cree First Nations from Alberta, Canada. And I hope you enjoyed their fine singing today. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I want to talk about an action or attitude we have all been guilty of sometime in our life, and that's anger. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You uh, may have experienced it. Maybe you experienced it today. <laughs> well, I know I have, and that's being honest with you. I've had had that uh, thing, and I don't, you know, that's something that uh, kind of goes along, I guess, with the territory in a sinful world, that we get angry. Uh, that example that I gave to you at the opening today <clears throat> of our broadcast about being stuck behind a car, remember that, where I said I was stuck behind a car at a stoplight? Yep, that was me. <laughs> I was... I, I remember this clearly because I wasn't driving not far from my house uh, and, as usual, in a hurry. And then I saw the light on about ready. It just got ready to turn. I wanted to get in the left-hand lane, and so I started the belt change. So just as I was getting up there, I sped up to the intersection uh, to, to get in that turning lane to see if I could make it. But the driver in the center lane was three lanes across. So the guy in the center lane, he pulled over into the left turning lane right in front of me and stopped. And, uh, yeah, I was a, I was a bit upset. <clears throat> I, <laughs> I also know from being at that light before that that light was one of those long lights. You know, the ones that you kind of maybe have visited before and it's just you sit there at that light and it takes forever for it to change or it seems like it well after sitting at that uh, long light which to me seemed like 15 minutes <laughs> it wasn't but it seemed like it the eternal signaling light finally turned green and I'm sitting behind that car and the person who f pulled up for me just sat there and I looked at the light and I thought okay he's he's hasn't noticed it's turned green yet. We've all done that. And the longer we sat there, I thought this light might be a long light when the red light is on, but when the turning light or green light, on, it doesn't take long. <laughs> and what I remember, I thought, should I blow my horn? But I thought, no, they'll, they'll see the light change. But then I kind of could see through the, his rear view window. And I could see he was on his phone, and he was texting. And uh, this time, that's when I kind of got upset. So just as I started to blow my horn, the driver realized that the light was getting ready to turn to yellow. And he took off. And guess what? He left me sitting there at now the uh, the turned red light for another 15 minutes. <laughs> Here I, you know, the guy pulled in front of me. I got mad at that. But when he sat there through the green light and then took off just when I needed to go, the light turned red. Uh, I was, I was so mad. <laughs> I was angry. 
Well, have you experienced anything like that? Well, if you haven't, uh, you just wait. <laughs> That's going to happen. I just know it. I think most of us have experienced being a- angry at some time or another. And it happens to all of us, some more than others. And as a Christian, we can become ashamed of our actions. We regret later that we even blew up over something that uh, may be so insignificant. We, we regret our, our patience just ran out, like me at the stoplight. <laughs> but when you think of it, anger can come in a couple of ways. One, like I just gave, is a personal example of uh, becoming angry because you believe you were done wrong. So you become upset at the person or situation uh, or maybe you just experienced. The, the other example may be flashes of anger when we witness cruelty, uh, maybe injustice or a betrayal or something like a perplexing deed, deeds of people, or even uh, ungodliness that we see, that we witness. You know, God created our emotions. Anger certainly has a justifiable, justifiable role too when you think about that, because sometimes we can think it makes you angry maybe at a person who's drinking and or uh, has not repented. It, it makes you upset. You know, but perhaps the warning light that I always think of is like a, a light on your dash. It comes on to, to ourselves is when anger maybe becomes prolonged and it causes us to be bitter and not be able to let it go. Uh, you know, the dangerous effect of anger is that it can become controlling. Uh, It affects our attitude and our disposition. And more important, it can become a constant stumbling block for the believer, for you and I. So for the Christian, the, the, the question might be, is anger a sin in the eyes of God? And I've thought about this. In my opinion, <clears throat> it is if we let it get out of control. I truly go along with this thought. Anger is what you do with it that becomes sin. Did you get that? Anger is what you do with it that becomes sin. Uh, you know, a powerful verse comes to mind on, on the subject of being angry, in it, whether it's a sin or not. Let's look at this in Ephesians 26, 27. It says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Well, in this verse, we clearly don't, read, don't get angry, or if you ever get angry, uh, they say, in your anger. That's what this says, in your anger. It doesn't say, if you are ever angry. They say, in your anger. You know, at some time or another, we will uh, experience anger. But we need to realize that sin is not when you feel or experience anger, but when you put an action to it. That's when it becomes serious. That's when it becomes a sin. We need to remember that uh, when anger lifts its ugly head, we need to ask God to help us through that situation, to take away the anger. I, I love this verse in James 1, 19 that says this. This says, let everyone be quick to hear Slow to speak, and look at that, slow to anger. Yeah, he isn't saying that anger is wrong. Of course, we're going to get angry. That's just part of our uh, creation package, how we were created. Essentially, essentially, 
uh, James just said, don't be quick-tempered. Well, sometimes we need to be aware of our actions. Pray for what I would call spiritual balance in your life. You know, in Proverbs 19.11, we read Solomon's wise counsel to us. Look at this. It says, a man's discretion makes him slow to anger. And it is his glory to overlook a transgression. In other words, balance gives us a sense uh, of discretion in life. And it is the mark of wisdom that Solomon gives us to overlook perceived transgressions against us, things that we don't like. You know, I, I remember hearing so many of our Native people becoming angry. I've been in those situations, and it leads to, it leads to a major grudge. It always seems, uh, this is a perfect example, it always seems tribal council decisions can bring that on sometimes. And I've seen it. <laughs> uh, next thing you know, that tribal council, council member, he's voted out. <laughs> Isn't that, isn't that common among our Native people? You know, yes, our anger can become out of control and lead to bitterness, temper problems, and even revenge or wrath. That's right. It's like I said earlier, anger is what you do with it that becomes a sin. So we need to pray more for patience. You know, patience calms the anger like water is thrown on a fire. So it's important to pray that God will give us calmness in times of emotional stress in our lives. You know, it's a scripture that fits well with us in trying to conquer anger and bitterness may, may be found in this verse in 2 Corinthians 10.5. Look at this which says, creating down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In other words, we can't oppose what we're going to think and dwell on, but we can continue to fuel our anger and emotions with wrong thoughts. Or we can take a stand and with God's help, refuse to allow the situation to get out of control. You know, the question I have for you is this. Have you been hurt? Are you angry at someone and just can't seem to get over it? I want to encourage you to forgive those who have hurt you. Let go of the angry feelings you're holding on to and place those situations in God's hands. Ask God for his forgiveness. He will give you peace and he will help you win this battle over those emotions that really can bring you down. Seems like it can bring you down. Don't let Satan take a stronghold in your life. Instead, give your heart and mind to Christ and he'll help you through. Let me end this week's broadcast with this incredible scripture that uh, the Apostle Paul told the Christians in Ephesus. He said this, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted." forgiving each other just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. We see that in Ephesians 4.31 and 4.32. I trust that today you will take heed of these verses of Scripture. Hide them in your heart and remember them when anger becomes an issue, especially this one, like Paul was preaching. I know that the Lord will help you through every emotional situation you may face. So I hope you'll do that today. Thank you for joining this week for Living Hope Today, and I hope you will join us next Thursday for our broadcast. Until then, 
May the Lord continue to bless and keep you.